Yeah, oh, look, look at them. Wow. Get the Sudimi going over here. Sudimi yeah. action. They had it all fried here. And the salmon. Oh, yeah. The salmon. I took them wow. out of the oven. Whoo. Whoo. Look at that. Huh? Those oh. guys out there yeah. are missing out, sir. And here's the salmon, right? Wow. But you know what? Yeah, this is the thing you need. You know, when you get Tazuke, I mean, when you get the Japanese breakfast. Coco. Yeah, you need this wow. thing. I love this. It's Tokyo Zuki. Oh, I see. Yeah, you see. Yeah, you see. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you see this Tokyo Zuki. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Quite a bit comes out from yeah. one can, yeah? And it's kind of pricey too. But, see, you get the Tokyo Zuki right over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get the salmon. But you know what's missing? The what? miso soup. Oh, you're going to make miso yeah, soup. Yeah, so I want, you know, it's so simple. I get about like, how many ounces? About 14 ounces of water. Almost two cups of water you can okay. put in here. And this stuff here, you know this brand here? Mm -hmm. I think it's really good. It's like the Miko brand and uh, M-I-K-O. And it's real authentic stuff. It, it, it tastes so good. It's... So, you know, nowadays, how about to make miso soup? So you just use this, okay? That's all you do. And mix it out. Yeah. Wow. And get the tofu, get the onions, get the everything. <laughs> oh, you amazing. See, yeah? see, look, look. Get amazing. everything. Amazing. Yeah? 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 Simply amazing. You see what I mean? Make the water hot, you know? I made the water hot. I mean, make microwave or made it very hot. Wow. And look, I get the miso soup there. Yeah. Okay. What a breakfast, boy. Okay. Yeah. Let me try this there. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not first time in my life. Oh, okay. 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 So, Natto fried rice. <laughs> Totemo. Oh, yeah, oh, good. Oiti. Totemo oiti. Jamie, you gotta make a little salty for breakfast. You and actually, when you serve, you only serve one small piece of that. You know. Uh -huh. You don't uh -huh. serve too much. Yeah. I need that. Mm. Mm. Oh, you know what? I surprised myself oh, this yeah. time. Hey, I surprised myself. Everything came so good. You oh. outdid yourself. Yeah, I even surprised myself. Mm. 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 Let me try the miso soup. Mm. Mm. Hey, this miso soup is good too, Dad. Mm. Mm. Okay, bye bye. Hey, Hello, now I'm done here. Guys, go fishing again. Go fishing. Yeah. Delicious. Go fishing some more fish. Mahalo. We'll see you around, folks. Thank oh, you so much for watching. Oh, good. Oh, good, no? Oh. No. For this next segment on Seniors Living in Paradise, we're joining a group of ladies called uh, the Garden Ladies. And with me, uh, my very good friend, Amy Hamani. She's Garden Ladies just love plants, they love flowers, and also they love to get together to eat. That's right, eh? That's right. <laughs> but Amy, tell us about this most recent project. Okay, um, I've been growing dahlias for oh, maybe four to five years, and this year, um, in March, eight of us ladies ordered bulbs from um, the Swan Island Dahlia Company in Oregon and we had a session where I kind of taught them how to plant dahlias that there are many many different types colors um, of dahlias and they're really actually very easy to grow as you can tell these you know all the other ladies are first-time growers and they did really well some of the ladies expressed an interest in growing dahlias so we got together we passed the catalog around and everybody placed an order and amazingly um, everybody ordered different flowers and that's why you see such a wide variety here yeah. today um, and this isn't all because we have some ladies yet to come who have even more dahlias but they they are beautiful they're easy as long as you have dirt in your garden that's all it's so easy yes it is very easy to grow and i'm sure the ladies will vouch for that and, yeah I, and I know you mentioned that a lot of them the first time they ever planted a grew. Yeah. all except myself they're all first time growers wow. and um, i'm hoping they're going to continue it because I want people to know that you can grow dahlias in yeah. Hilo and you can grow them well and easily. 
So what we're looking at is a, a result of how many months? Uh, we planted in March, and this is June. So it doesn't take that long for the blooms to come on. Okay, what do, what do we have here? Okay, Amy here has uh, Walter Hardesty, and if she puts it next to her face, you can see how large that flower is. <laughs> and then... And beautiful. You, yes, it's lovely. The and face. Can you turn it around? And this is Envy. And look at the colors, it's gorgeous. Okay, these uh, dahlias grew in my garden in, in, in the dirt. I mean, they did not potted plants. And uh, there are 10 varieties here, and they, except for one, they all bloomed. They all bloom in abundance like this. You use any kind of special fertilizer? No, this, this, I, I, I did put a little bit of fertilizer every so often. And this is your first time? First experience with dahlias. And not to be outdone, our friend Amy grew these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful dahlias. Yeah? Can you kind of describe it, Amy? Sure. This one is called Peaches and Dreams. And actually, my daughter Jennifer um, picked this out of the catalog. And, um, and I like this one. This one is called Jits Perfection. And it's excellent as a cut flower and this is the first bloom for this year, for this plant. And finally, I'd like to introduce the president of the Garden Girls, Lily Chow. <laughs> They've been at it for a number of years lately. If somebody's interested, you know, in joining the group, uh, what happened? Who do they call? I guess call me <laughs> at 959-7594, and I can give them some information. Wonderful. Okay, we're going to sit down and eat now. Yeah, okay. All right. And here they are, once again, the Garden Girls of Hilo. Big wave and aloha. I was very excited to go to the Hilo Life Care Center to celebrate National Home Nursing Week. I was thrilled to see my family, my friends, and their caregivers. Yes, these are the people that gave me the value and lessons I needed to learn to live a happy, successful life. Actually, we are to thank all you, uh, uh, the people up there at the Life Care Center. My mom's here, my Andy comes here. A lot of people come here. And if it wasn't for you, I don't know what Hilo would be all about. So we just want to personally say thank you very much. And I also want to thank all the caregivers over here. You know, you folks are really unbelievable at all the things that you guys do and uh, how much you guys sacrifice. But you know, I've learned a lot from uh, a lot of you guys growing up. You know, and that's the reason why I am what I am today. So I just want to say thank you so very much for everything. I see you used to see you folks shopping at KTA. Hey. 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 George Yoshida and I prepared several dishes for the caregivers the patients and the nurses. We started off with a salsa appetizer. Okay, on that day, you would pour, so anything we do, we like stretch them, right? right. <laughs> so we go out there, oh, there's plenty of tomato on the tree, so we right. put in that extra tomato. Now all of a sudden, instead of feeding 10 guys, it goes to be 20. Oh, okay. You stretch them out right. and stretch oh. them, yeah. That day, I had a problem finding a ripe avocado, but you know, the audience had one and were willing to share it with me. You went from my market? We went from my tree! Yeah! Oh, oh, I don't know what I'm market! Yeah. My tree. Yes, there was so much fun and laughter, and there was a lot of audience participation. So that was our appetizer, salsa with tortilla chips. That morning, I got a beautiful hyotang, so I decided to do a hyotang and park for dinner. I first show the audience how to create chop bark using a pork shoulder roll. This is the side that you should buy. You go this side of the pork part, you can tell, you see over here all the, uh, it's like the back of the pork, right? So this side of the pork part has all the meat and it only has a small bone inside. Here, I'm going to show you the small bone. This is all the bone it has. Look. Huh? Look at that. Huh? <laughs> I sliced the pork into thin stir-fried pieces. Then I made a marinade, a mixture of flour and shoyu. Stop. Okay. Yeah. And I mix it up like this. And I make a nice base. See? And I put in the pork. I let it sit for five to ten minutes. 
Then in a frying pan with olive oil, I added in some garlic and ginger and began stir okay. frying the pork. And it's a good thing I put the flour and the shoyu on together. And I think it sticks a little bit to the pan, yes. And the reason why is because when I get the chicken broth, I'm gonna scrape it all off. Because it's stuck to the pan, I added in some chicken broth and I began slicing my hyotang. I then added in the hyotang and some chicken broth. Dashi stock could also be substituted for the chicken broth. And if you want extra flavor, you could even add in some patis. So for dinner, we had hyotang and pork, and since I had some extra pork, I made some eggplant and pork using the same recipe. So for dinner, it was hyotang and pork, eggplant and pork, takuang with rice. And this is what the taste testers had to say. <laughs> Thank you to all the nurses, the caregivers, and the people at the Hilo Life Care Center. We really appreciate all you do. One of the most exciting events during summer is attending a Bone Dance Festival. It started in Japan, but today in Hawaii, we create our own style of dancing, where you don't only find the traditional Japanese dances, but you'll find dancing to American music on Hawaiian style. This is what makes Hawaii Bone Dance so special. Here you find dancers of all ages having fun eating all the delicious food as well as wearing kimono and hoppy coat, dancing in circles with pepper lanterns, taiko drums, which drive the beat of the songs. Obong is a time we think about our ancestors and appreciate their guidance, efforts, and wisdom. Here's Winban Jeffrey Soga. Sensei, I also wanted to ask, you know, members of your church, um, they practice all year round for this one dance. Nah, not all year round, but about two months ago from yeah. Ju uh, June. Yeah. Um, and they invite yeah. the public to come and learn the dances. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. You yeah. have a couple of volunteer instructors. Yeah, our volunteer instructors welcome uh, outside people and yeah. teach the bone dance. Yeah, for two hours every Tuesday. I see. I know Mrs. Kaya and uh, Jane Miyazaki uh, are some of your instructors. Uh huh. Yes, they are the very core person for us. Anybody else? I know it takes a lot to put uh, put on a bone dance festival, and you must you must have hundreds of volunteers to to help and put this on. Oh yeah, uh, without their hard our members hard working. Couldn't have, yeah. Can I have this guy festival? Okay. Hey, thank you so much for joining us, Sensei. And are you gonna? You look so appropriately dressed for the bond dance. Are you gonna be dancing too? Uh, later, later. Not this early time. Yeah, I'm gonna get tired. Yeah. yeah.